Okay, what's up everybody? Michael Phoenix here. We are here at the Banana Factory on the first Friday of December here in the holiday season in the Lehigh Valley. Um, I have a pleasure of interviewing a really great art, uh, resident artist here, thankfully. Um, I would always let, usually let people introduce themselves and give, you know, tell a little bit about themselves. Wow, I didn't even know the Banana Factory was around for 15 years, honestly. Came in right at the end of the first year, so. So I came in 2012, and I was the first year. So I came out of college and was looking for a place to do some teaching and display my artwork, so the Banana Factory was a great spot. So I teach a lot of drawing and painting classes and also create my own artwork as well. Okay. So you, when you went to when you went to school, was it like teaching something you always wanted to do, or did it kind of just like come along with like was it the art first, then you developed the desire for teaching? Well, it was definitely when I went to college. It was to learn about art and kind of be creative, do all the experimentation there. It was coming out of college. You know, you have to be creative with your decisions sometimes with art. So teaching seemed like a great way to share my passion, but also bring in some extra money as well. So. Okay. So how did you like? Was art like being an artist in art? Was that always like kind of a natural talent for you, or was it one of those where it's like you, you wanted to try it and then just develop the talent? I definitely remember being young and being creative but also doing a lot of playing outside as well, so it was more of a tomboy also. But it was really in high school that I had a very wonderful teacher, teacher who took the time to work with all of us, and I took as many classes as I could in high school, and that's what led me to Kutztown University. That's where I went to college. Okay. So I always remember being creative, but it was really more in the middle school, high, high school, that I realized, hey, this is something that I want to pursue. Okay, now your style is basically realism with nature, but it's also in, you know, people can look at some of the photos I'm going to take. There's also some, like when I, when I look at your work, it makes you stop and look, like some of your pieces of your work makes you stop and look and take in a deeper meaning than the, than like the tree or the nature part of it. Has that always been... You know, does that, is that like a side effect of, of your art, or is it something that you try to, because sometimes artists try to intentionally do it, and sometimes it's just kind of like just a side effect of it. I think some of it is subconscious. I'm not really going in sometimes with a clear idea of what's going to happen. All the places are inspired by actual places, but then I kind of take it from there and make it my own. Um, sometimes playing with the color, the feeling of light, using kind of trees is more of a figurative um, approach. So there's definitely a lot of, you know, every piece is different. Um, sometimes it's just preserving the, the place that we travel to, you know, the essence of the place, really giving some sort of feeling in others, um, being really experimental in a few paintings as with, well. With art, unless you're actually trying to like do like almost like a photograph or copy some, I mean, the definite one of the definitions of art is don't have always, you know, put the limits on yourself. Am I right? Absolutely. And don't have an idea exactly of what's going to be at the end because it really has kind of a, its own path. It takes on its own feeling, meaning. Um, that you're not even quite sure where did that come from. So. Okay, so it kind of. Uh, like as a as an author, I you know I one of my favorite books, Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. But then I saw an interview with him, uh, read an interview with him, and he said he lets the characters tell him what to do. So with you, it's, with your style, it's kind of, almost kind of like the painting takes on a life of its own at, at times. And that's the way it should be. I think um, Picasso said you should have an idea, but it should be a vague idea because it really does come its own piece. Okay. Now I see you have different sizes here. Is it easier to paint and create on a larger scale, or is it easier to do it on the small on a smaller scale? Because you know some of your pieces here has like the same detail on the small wooden block as it does over there, you know, or even more detail. So, is it easier to do it on a smaller scale or a larger scale? Well, I think they both have their challenges. Um, I 
generally work on the smaller size, smaller scale. It's to me more my comfort level, my comfort zone. Um, sometimes I found the smaller pieces are a little more challenging because what I want to do is kind of grab attention from a distance, which is sometimes harder with the smaller piece. But then as the person comes closer to see, I want there to be details um, that they haven't seen from far away. So it's almost like a, an invitation to draw you in closer. And that's what I love about the kind of intimate size with the smaller pieces. Um, obviously the large pieces have more of a present sometimes, um, but they still have areas where I want to treat them a little differently so when you get up close you're going to see something new. Okay. A um, couple more questions. We're going to wind this out because First Friday is about to kick off and from the crowd downstairs already and the weather, it's probably going to be packed in here. So, but um, actually, uh, I just we'll wind this out with just one final question quick and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, and I always end every single interview, no matter who, who it is or what they do with this question. Advice to other artists out there, whether it's a kid in grade school who wants to try it or thinks they have a natural talent or someone who 60 years old 62 they retired you know what i have all this time on my hands it's something i've always wanted to do let's give it a shot advice to other artists even like you know whether they paint musicians writers like myself etc advice to other other people out there definitely give it a try i think a lot of people especially as they get older they talk themselves out of doing it and sometimes arts can be the same way so the hardest part is just getting started but then the creativity starts to flow you just start to learn and explore and it's really it's a great way to relax I find kind of meditation um, also very important with making art and bringing people together I teach all different age groups and it's really a pleasure to just make a connection with people that we, number one don't know they have the talent and number two don't have time really to make art as an important part of their life so to give them maybe a three-hour class once a week or private instruction in the studio just to let them have that time okay if you're gonna make mistakes it's fine but every time you put your pencil or paintbrush to paper or canvas you're learning and you're growing as a person well I apologize. The way my brain thinks, I always think of great questions ago. And you just gave me a great idea for another question. With an artist, especially with some with someone who paints, draws, whatever, especially in that area of art, um, would it be safe to say that sometimes what you think might be a mistake could take you in an entirely different direction? That if you think it's a mistake, sometimes it's good to run with it. Uh, I fell in love with abstract art. I fell in love with abstract art in the 80s. And some of that abstract art back then, it was like, I'm like, huh? You know, even in fact, um, I was just over at the Allentown Art Museum last night, and they have a fantastic pop culture exhibit. But I walked into one room, and I was like, okay, it's the same thing, basically, over and over, just with different backgrounds. I'm like, okay, so yeah, I understand, you know, it's like, you know, what's considered a masterpiece to someone is... Someone else might look at it like, okay, why is this, why did you even bother? And kind of learning more about why the person created what they did and just finding out more about the piece. Um, you can pretty much be impressed by just their train of thought or doing something that no one else ever tried before. So okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Hopefully you enjoyed the interview. And to you and your family, I wish you a very happy and very safe holiday season, honestly. Thank you very much.